passing. Good afternoon, everyone. If you could start finding your seats. Welcome, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kirsten Johnson. I'm the Senior Director for Secondary Education. Uh, we're here today to talk about our College Career Life Initiative uh, that is getting ready to um, have some big plans ahead. And we wanted to use this opportunity to share those plans with you. Uh, before we start off our time today, um, I'm going to do a quick land acknowledgement. Uh, so we're honoring our Denina land. We acknowledge that we gather here today on the traditional lands of the Denina people of Upper Cook Inlet. For thousands of years, the Denina people have been and continue to be the stewards of this land. ASD is committed to diversity and inclusion, and it is with honor and respect that we recognize all Indigenous people who live and learn in our community. So with that, um, I would like to uh, turn it over to our superintendent, Dr. Bryant, to kick us off. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Jarrett Bryant. I am the proud superintendent of Anchorage School District. And believe it or not, it's almost my one year anniversary, but y'all didn't tell me I would need my snow boots in May. <laughs> that was a surprise. That's just the times we live in. Um, but on a serious note, I'm really excited to have you here. Um, this is a really big event for us. Um, we really wanted you all to be among the first to get uh, an inside look into something we've been working on for a number of months. Um, we've sent staff um, across the country to look at models for what does it look like to have a true college career and life readiness transformation. Brings me back to my high school math teacher days. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, so uh, we're going to use that term CCL a lot, so just to remind everybody, it's that's college career and life readiness. And this is a really important time to start thinking about CCL. I think a lot of us as educators recognize that we have talent shortages. Um, we have an out-migration problem here in Alaska and in Anchorage. And I think what a lot of people forget is that the future of the workforce is right here in our schools. Um, but it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take your support. And I think what you can see if you look at our table is that it really takes a village to make this work. So if there's one thing I want you to realize today is that this is not an ASD initiative. This is really a municipality of Anchorage initiative. This is a full citywide initiative. So you'll notice that we have representatives from UAA, from the Muni, our teachers, uh, the nonprofit sector, and others who are really going to form the backbone of this exciting multi-year transformation. Um, so with that said, um, I also want to recognize our amazing school board because before I came, they came together and created a really bold vision for the school district. Um, there's only three goals that govern the Anchorage School District. One of them is around reading proficiency. The other one is around math proficiency. And the third one is around college career and life readiness. And what the school board envisions is that we'll have a day where every single student in the Anchorage School District will be prepared for post-secondary and beyond. And it's really humbling and exciting to help lead that charge as superintendent. Um, so I, I do want to acknowledge the school board. I see member lessons and perhaps others in the room, um, but thank you. Um, we are thrilled to carry out that bold vision. So with that said, I will go ahead and pass it off to our chief academic officer. Sven Gustafson. <laughs> so I'm Sven Gustafson. I am the chief academic officer for our school district. And, and this is like one of the, I've been looking forward to this day because this is the kind of work that I have been doing my entire career as a former career technology education teacher. Um, what are we looking for in our graduates? We're gonna be working on designing what, the, what our graduate looks like, but here in ASD, we wanna make sure our kids are ready for diplomas plus more. As a former high school principal, I would see our kids come across the stage all excited and then not know what they're doing the next day. And so here we are, we're gonna be able to have these kiddos know what they want to do, have an avenue to get there and really develop themselves into the future. So um, why are we doing this? Why, why now, why are we doing this? Dr. Bryant talked about workforce development and, and our, our staffing shortages and whatnot, but really at the end of the day, we want research-based student success indi indicators. We want to be able to say this is successful. These kids are being successful. They do things out in our community. They develop those skills to be able to stay here, work here, see themselves in our community after graduation. You know, right now we have a huge out migration for our 18 to 24 year olds. And we want them to be able to have a perspective of they have a place here. You know, right now, we, we're needing to turn this thing around in our community, in our state, and what better place to do that than in education. So we also need to make sure we're meeting the workforce need, not for today, not for 10 years ago, but for from now until the future, right? So we, we need the businesses with us. We need them to be helping us design what do we need to teach in our schools to help these kids be successful here in Anchorage or here in Alaska, because as you know, yeah, we're here in Alaska, but there's a lot of statewide stuff right here in our city. So, and then in Anchorage, we have all these initiatives going on, but at the end of the day, we're graduating kids. We're getting them ready for the workforce. We're getting re them ready for careers, for college, or for life, right? That's our overall goal. So all of our initiatives being under one umbrella, our K-3 reading adoption, that's only gonna help this, right? We have people, kids that read as they move forward and have the, develop soft skills. It's all gonna work so that we can have those kids ready. So looking at the workforce back in 1970, you needed to have a high school diploma for most of the jobs. And if you went to college, you know, about 20 some percent of the jobs needed an after school, after high school, some kind of training. 
In 2025, we're looking at about 20% of our jobs needing just a high school diploma with more than about 80% needing something after high school. It doesn't have to be college. It could be uh, apprenticeships or union or military or all sorts of different things. So we need to be able to develop these things so that kids can be successful and have that avenue after diploma. You know, a lot of the stuff that we have in our school, we have pockets of excellence and we have things all over the place. We've got so many people doing amazing things, so many kids in amazing situations, but they're not aligned, right? So we look at the left side, we have that pockets of excellence, but we don't know where they fit or even sometimes they don't lead to something. Then we move over to impact with alignment. Okay, we're getting some alignment going and, and we're actually developing kids and getting them into places. But at the end of the day, we really want to be able to have the collective impact where we're all working together for the same goal. So that, and, that, and I'm not talking just in the school district, but in our community. So Kirsten's gonna dive into that a little bit more and uh, lead us through the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll save that mic for later. Um, so uh, talk, speaking to the collective impact that Sven just uh, spoke about, one of the ways we're going to do this, like Sven talked about, is our CCL initiative is a broad umbrella. But more specifically, what we're looking at is creating academies within our high schools. And academies um, can take on many different forms. And you've probably heard that, that term a lot. And I wanna spend some time camping out on that concept today. So you really know, what does that mean when I say we're gonna develop academies? Generally, what we're looking at doing at this point is a freshman academy for every high school freshman in a big eight high school, um, a comprehensive high school starting in the fall of 2024. Following that, we will look at launching career academies in the fall of 2025. And concurrently, while we're doing that, we want to start preparing our middle school students for that experience as well. And so most of us know that sixth grade is moving to middle school in the fall of 2024 holistically across our district. And so part of the preparation we need to do is beef up our career development for our middle school students at the same time we're building that freshman academy experience and our career academy experience for grades 10 through 12. And so when we talk about academies, that's what I'm referring to because there's lots of different def definitions in education around academy. So diving into that even further, what does an academy look like? Um, when we say freshman academy or career academy in the Anchorage School District. And the beauty of the work that we're gonna do is that in the next school year, we will be spending a lot of time from lots of different stakeholders developing what does the, the career academy and freshman academy experience mean for the Anchorage community. And generally though, when we speak about academies in that, that realm, we're talking about a small personalized environment for students. So if you think about students in a large comprehensive high school, there are 1800 students in some of our high schools. That's a really hard way as a 14 year old to come into an environment and feel connected in your school. So by having that freshman academy experience and those transition activities that we can build and the preparation we can give them that freshman year so that they're ready for that career academy will enhance their experience and their belonging within the school. The other part that's going to be significantly different as we move forward, and, and we have a lot of our business community, we have our provost from UAA here, we have um, a lot of our educators that are going to talk more specifically, but all of those groups and stakeholders and people that are not in this room or online with us are going to be at the table really developing that experience. And that's going to be the inherent difference between some other initiatives you've seen in Anchorage School District versus this particular initiative and transformation. So it's going to be a community-based effort, not an individual ASD effort. The other thing that you're really going to look, um, see in an academy model is applied learning opportunities. Um, and those are the things that I think most people think of when I say career academy. So you're going to see business and industry and partners alongside teachers in classrooms in our schools. 
you'll see our kids going out to business and industry and other partners doing work-based learning opportunities, job shadows, internships, lots of different activities that we will start to build over the course of time um, as a part of the academy experience. Lots of people um, want to talk about uh, Career Academy not being rigorous. And I wanted to kind of just hit that head on. This will be rigorous work for students. This isn't dumbing down curriculum, which I think a lot of us fear when we say we're doing this. This is a rigorous content with challenging experiences that are really relevant for kids in their greater adult life. Um, the other myth that I want to just talk about a little bit is when we say Career Academy, a lot of times we don't think of college per se. This is definitely a college um, and career initiative. So it's about presenting all options for kids um, and letting them choose their course and guiding them along that path. So if they still want to be a college bound student, they're more than happy to do that. If they want to go straight to career, they can do that also. Um, and we want to make it so that they know what their plan is when they leave us through the academy experience. And then the other part that I think we hear about all the time, especially when people talk generally about teenagers, is that we've got to develop what we, what we call 21st century skills. So how are you able to be a part of a team and be a good teammate when you are in the career field? How do you um, apply critical thinking to your job when you um, leave us as a student in the Anchorage School District. We want creative people, we want people who can collaborate, and we want people who can really communicate well. And those are all skills that um, our employers after high school are looking for as well. Um, and, and that's what our employers are telling us that our kids when they leave us struggle with also. So there's a joint purpose there for really including that as a part of the academy work. Um, so I've talked a little bit about how this transformation is going to be really different um, than just an isolated Anchorage School District initiative. And we are partnering with Ford Next Generation Learning through this effort um, within the school district and within the Anchorage community. And our partners are here today. So I just want to point them out at our table if you could wave. So um, for those that are here in person, if you'd like to chat with them after, um, we'll be here a little bit later. But we're not doing this alone. We have our partners from the next generation, Board Next Generation Learning to help guide us. And part of that is to make sure that we don't follow some of the same pitfalls that other communities have fallen into. So we can learn from those mistakes of other communities. This, the second part of the group that I want to introduce is some of our, our partners that have already started planning and are kind of our, our pioneers in partnership, I, I'll say. Um, so um, I'd like to introduce them. So Bill Pop is here from the Anchorage Economic Development Consortium, uh, Corporation, sorry. <laughs> um, Clark Halverson is here from United Way. And Denise Runge is here from UAA, um, and we're going to hear from them here in a little bit as a part of a panel presentation. But we already are not doing this work alone, and those partnerships will still grow. There's some of our other partners in the audience. Um, Junior is here from the municipality and the mayor's office. Um, I think I saw Shauna Toma. She's here from Northern Compass. They're all pioneering partners with us in the Anchorage School District. So I just, um, if we could just give them a round of applause for being here. Um, I know Bruce Bustamante is here from the chamber too, listening in. Um, we're hoping to get him in on this work too. So <laughs> uh, not to put him on the spot, but um, anyway, so um, the, these folks are serious about this work. They're excited about this work and I can't wait for you to hear from them a little bit later. But getting back a little bit to our nuts and bolts before we hear from our panel, um, I just wanna talk a little bit about what this model looks like in terms of transforming our educational experience for our kids and the work that we're gonna do in the next year. So the, the entire concept of developing our freshman academies, our career development at middle school and our career academies at high school is really about improving student outcomes, improving workforce outcomes and improving our greater community prosperity. And there's another part in there around social mobility we want our kids, you know, there's that American dream concept of, 
you come to America and you do better than, than the last generation or your parents, right? Everybody's kind of heard that, that concept. Social mobility is really important for our community right now. We want our kids coming to the Anchorage School District and going out and being viable, happy, healthy adults and doing better than the last generation. Um, and that's really what this work does. It gives kids that opportunity. Um, and so in order to do those, to, to achieve that, we have to look at three separate areas that will really engage in work um, as we go along. One is transforming our teaching and learning. Um, so I've, I've touched on a number of concepts already that are involved in that, but it's a career focused academic approach. We're talking about work-based learning opportunities, we're looking at learning and work or career pathways for students. And we're looking at additional credit opportunities in post-secondary. And we're also looking at a lot of student voice and leadership so that they have those soft skills that we've talked about as they go along. This, the second bucket of work that we'd really look at is transforming the culture and systems and structures of schools. Schools um, historically have operated quite a bit in isolation. So this approach is really different um, and it's really big. I'm gonna acknowledge that it's a big goal um, and it's gonna take a lot of us to achieve it. But I think the end result is definitely worth it for our kids and our next generation. So when we talk about transforming the culture and systems and structures, we're looking at rather than teachers teaching in isolation, we're looking at teams of educators that are partnering with outside partners to give kids the best experience in the classroom or maybe in the field while they're learning. Um, we're also looking at family engagement. We're looking at professional development. We're looking at data systems and we're looking at removing roadblocks in our system so that it's not extremely frustrating to get to the end goal that we wanna get to because education inherently is full of bureaucracy. So is government and other entities, but education does a really great job at it. And unfortunately that gets in the way of outcomes for kids. And that's what we really have to break down through this process. Um, and then we've talked a lot about partnership as well, but we really need to transform the partnerships between schools and, and communities. We don't want business partners just to come to our schools for a one and done kind of event. So some of those things are good and valuable, but they don't help us get kids down the road in the long run, typically. We want embedded experiences and partnerships for our kids. We want our kids to really have practice in that real world scenario in a career or industry before they go out and they make that mistake as an adult and it costs them more money at a higher level of education institution or make that mistake where they may get fired from a first job and that's on their job history, right? So if we can give them that supportive environment with really great partnerships um, to set them off into the world with a plan, then we're, we're money ahead with our kids and our kids will be more successful. So with that, um, I'd like to turn it over to our panel. And um, the first question I'm gonna ask um, are both, all three, Bill, um, Clark and Denise, um, so these are folks that have, have been alongside me and kind of developing this work over the course of the last, I don't know, six months or so. Um, and we're here kind of launching this internally to our district. Can you share what challenges um, you see from, from kind of the outside of the district looking in as we face, we face as a community with the current and future workforce? Well, hello everyone. And first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, we face immense challenges in the future of our workforce. Our nation is undergoing a demographic shift of, of historic proportion, and we are going to have smaller workforces in the coming decades. Uh, we are not having enough babies in previous generations behind the very large baby boom generation. And this is putting us in a very difficult circumstance here in Anchorage and Alaska. And we've been seeing that the last decade of net out migration of working age adults. Uh, we've lost over 15,000 of them just from our city in just a decade. That is a significant loss. And that's why we're seeing two to two and a half times as many job postings as we currently have people out looking for work right now. So the work being done in the academies program is a vital effort in securing a skilled and available workforce for the future of our economy in the coming 
decades. It, it is going to meet needs that are uh, and address uh, current challenges. For example, it was mentioned earlier, the uh, uh, excuse me, 16 to 26 year old age demographic, Anchorage is losing 34% of that population permanently to the lower 48. One out of three of our 16 to 26 year olds leave Alaska and don't come back. And a good performing city will only lose 22, 25%. And this is, and often we hear anecdotally that it's because they can't find opportunity. And I think a part of that is they're not equipped for opportunity. And I've seen the elephant having traveled to Nashville uh, just recently with, with the school district, deeply appreciative of that opportunity and visiting a local high school and learning that they took a uh, high school that we visited that had a dropout rate, a, uh, excuse me, a, gradu a graduation rate of 58% a decade ago and have now turned it into 82% graduation rate in just 10 years. And students that are enthusiastic, we got to talk to a lot of them who all feel strongly that while they may have been in an academy that they weren't necessarily going into that particular discipline, they were learning skills that were transferable and they were very optimistic that they were gonna be employable the day they graduated and that they had a path well chosen out. It's just, I've seen the elephant. And we're here trying to describe it to you. And I know it's kind of hard to you know, get that description across and have it mean anything, but uh, it is an amazing success story in Nashville. So much so that there were three other cities, including ours that were there looking at it and Memphis, a, a very nearby neighbor. I'm speaking to the Chamber of Commerce of both communities, the leaders of both of those communities. They were highly enthusiastic. The Nashville Chamber says it's the greatest thing ever to happen to their economy. And the Memphis uh, Chamber of Commerce said, well, we want that too. And uh, I will tell you that I have shared this, this information that I've come back with, with my board of directors, with many of our members, and a lot of other members of the business community, and they are highly intrigued about how they can get involved in this and support it and make it successful. Because we need this. We desperately need this for our future. Those stats were impressive that you remembered them. I, I'm not going to be able to do that. I think it, it was really great. Um, I just really appreciated hearing Dr. Bryant start the conversation about it takes a village. And, you know, I, I think we've all heard that so many times and maybe we've heard it so many times that we lost track of the brilliance of it. And for me, I was just sitting sitting with that for a moment and thinking back on, you know, if we really want our kids to be successful, not my kids, but our kids across the all of Anchorage, it really takes all of us. Um, it takes our parents, it takes our schools, it takes our families, and our, <clears throat> it takes the educators, it takes our businesses and our organizations. And I get excited about this work because that's my sweet spot at the United Way. You know, we really are able to go out there and create will in our community, tell your story. We're able to engage businesses. We're able to engage organizations. And when I was hearing Sven talk about alignment, <clears throat> you know, it's one thing to say, what if we get ASD in alignment? But what if we get our community in alignment around this? What if we get Juno in alignment about how we have to fund this work and the different pieces? And the way to do that is bringing us together in this way. So we're really excited about United Way. We've been partnering with ASD, I think since 2008, not me, it was before me. Um, done great things around attendance. We've done great things around 90 by 2020, trying to change our graduation rate. And from all that work, it has really impacted us as an organization. And we now have a new initiative called Cradle to Career, where we're really talking about from early development to career. And we have focused equity as our foundation for that work. And you talk about alignment. When you look at the work that you're doing with CCL, I have to get into the educational acronyms now. Um, that's what this is built on. It, you know, it's about our kids across the community. And I think that's just one of the really exciting things for us. So you have a partner in United Way. I just sat down this morning with 50 nonprofit organizations and told them the story of what this, this district is doing. They're excited about it. And I am, I'm just hopeful that the alignment bleeds out of, bleeds out of the school district, goes into our community, and goes all the way down to Juno so that we can really make some changes. Thanks. Here, here, that's hard to follow. <laughs> um, you know, from my perspective, really focusing in on what, what the current and future workforce challenges are, um, 
they're at times they seem almost insurmountable, right? We've got all these openings. Everything requires experience. Everything requires skill. How does a kid get that, right? And I know as educators, because I'm an educator, one of the things that that we all think about is there's got to be a better way to structure this thing that we do in education so that the experience is built in. So at the university, we've been doing a lot of the same kind of conversation that is happening here at the district. It makes sense to me that this has got to be a partnership. Um, given the statistics about how many people are gonna need some form of post-secondary training, credential, certificate, or education in order to have a reasonable chance at a, at a well-paying job, we, we've gotta do this in partnership. And so from my perspective, you know, the, the school district and the university have, again, just like within individual schools, there's some amazing partnerships. The Alaska Middle College School is an incredible, incredible opportunity with students walking away with, you know, 45, 50 credits, um, all of which count toward their baccalaureate degree. It's incredible. We've done the Aviation Academy. Um, the, the academies or, or special programs for medical assisting and CNA and all of these great opportunities. We've got students in individual high schools right now across the district earning career and tech ed credits that they can bring either to the university or to AvTech or another trainer, right? So there's all this great stuff, but it doesn't necessarily help every student every kid have a pathway. And so to me, the challenge and, and the, the future workforce need that we can really address with this model is making every student have an opportunity to link to the, the skills and the training that they need for their future career. All right, thanks you guys. Um, Denise, maybe you could just keep the mic and we can go back the other direction on the second question. Tell me, um, some of you have touched on this a little bit, but tell me what really excites you or shows promise for you around CCL and the academy model. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, being able to go on the trip to Nashville and to see it in action, um, one of the, the real highlights and the memories for me is a young lady that we met who wasn't doing really well before she got into the academies, um, started down a path, and today she's employed I think full time in a very well paying job with the city, making great money. She knows exactly what she wants to do. She's been accepted into the Air Force. I mean, it's just, it was incredible the stories that we heard. And so I'm excited about the outcomes. I'm excited about the partnership aspect of it, deepening what is already a strong partnership from our perspective, but also expanding it. The other thing that really excites me um, is that, you know, in the same way that that the university has been working on things like apprenticeship pathways and alternative ways of looking at credentialing and building some short term and all of this kind of stuff, this model really doesn't have a one size fits all. It has a whole bunch of different sizes that fit a whole bunch of different kinds of kids, but they're all put together in such a way that that kid is going to have belonging. My, my son didn't go through the Anchorage School District, but I remember that 14-year-old hitting a great big high school and just feeling completely lost. And I can imagine if he had been put into the school within a school, that smaller group with a focused purpose, things would have been so much better for him and it would have been a much, much easier transition. So that excites me as well. Thank you. Clark, what, what excites you about the work? Well, a lot. I, the easy answer for me is it makes the rest of my work really easy <laughs> because it's it's that moving upstream. You know, if we do this work really well, we're going to have kids going in, making good jobs, having different health outcomes. Um, Housing is going to be less of an issue. It is really a community building effort, but that's my selfish side. So if that happens, super good. It's not why I'm here. I think the thing that excites me about the model the most maybe is that it is, it isn't set in stone. And it's been really fun to listen to the Ford team kind of talk with us about, it's about having conversations in our community to understand 
what our parents need. So talking about parent councils, what do our kids need? And then going into our community and working with Bill to understand what do our businesses need? Where are the jobs? And we build a program based on Anchorage. And it's a program that can shift. It can change as our needs change. And I think that flexibility of the program is great. And if you do that well, we all have buy-in. And it's our program and it's our district. And I hear sometimes that, you know, the district's doing something in a silo and the community lets you do that really easy because we stay out of it, both in our funding and in our volunteering and the different pieces. And I think the exciting thing about this model for me is it requires our community to come together. The only way this works is if we come together and build this together. And if we build it together, I think there's a different level of accountability across Anchorage to make it work. And then again, we just all need to go down to Juno and have that accountability grow there as well. Thanks. All right, thank Bill, Bill, I know is excited. We've had lots of conversations. <laughs> yeah. um, I have more data. Um, <laughs> You know, I got to tell you guys, um, I came back, or the school that I toured was Overton High School in Nashville, if you want to look them up. Um, I've got a few brochures on their program here. Um, I got to tell you, I have been carpet bombing uh, my board, my membership with the literature on Overton High School to try and help them to understand just what this is going to mean. This is a game changer for the community. In January, AEDC launched the Choose Anchorage uh, Action Plan. We are trying to change the community in regards to business vitality, talent, quality of place and infrastructure in a long-term planning and actions effort that is going to result in significant change in the community if we're successful. And we are trying to gather community partners, dozens and dozens and dozens of community partners in the business world, in the nonprofit world, in the government world, and just in the citizenry of our city. Um, we are very excited about this campaign, and this Academy's program is hand in glove with what we have put together as an action plan. And it will have quantitative results for the community and qualitative results for the community. When we looked at Overton, you know, one of the things I noticed was that they, you know, they have a very strong externship program for teachers and internship program for students as a result of that externship program because the teachers now know people that they can hook their students up with to get them into internships. What an amazing connection, just stunning. And the business community has been very committed in, in Nashville. And I believe the Anchorage business community is standing ready once they understand what their opportunities are to be involved in this program. At Overton High School, just in one high school, they had over 6,000 volunteer hours committed in one year from their business community. I want you to think about that. That's almost 120 full-time employment equivalent additions to the quality of education in that high school. Wow, 120 FTEs added to that school and just not having to pay for it. How about that? You know, it, and, and it's an amazing connection between the academic world and the business world and the community at large. And I think that's what gets me most animated about this because I walk the halls, I met the students, the enthusiasm, we got caught in the hallway at break a couple of times. You know what, how that can be. This was camaraderie. I was watching the kids. This is a school where the 68% of the students, English is not their primary language. And yet I didn't see any kind of, of clickishness. I saw just collaboration and, and camaraderie throughout the halls and in the classrooms and meeting with those students. It was freaking amazing. I mean, you know, I'm talking to kids doing water studies in one classroom. I'm talking to other kids that are designing a business plan for taking a tour group to one of their local facilities. I asked them if they were doing any plans for Alaska trips. They said they asked and weren't allowed. <laughs> they had to keep it local. And then I met our tour guides. One of the young, uh, the young man who was an immigrant from south of the border was an unescorted minor and was planning on going into marketing and was gonna pursue his four-year degree in marketing. The young lady who was our other escort, her goal in the health program, which was amazing, was to either be a pediatric ICU nurse and short of that, an ICU nurse. That was her goal and aspiration. And those were the kinds of answers that I got from a number of students, but here's the one that really hit it out, and I'll close on this. I, I met at least six students 
who told, uh, who asked, is the academy that you're in the path that you're going to pursue? No. Do you know what you want to pursue? No. Is this program been worth it to you? Oh man, yeah. It's teaching me stuff that I never wouldn't, would have learned any other way. And I'm optimistic. I'm going to find my path was just kind of the paraphrase of the responses that I got from all six. Now, if that isn't a game change, I don't know what is. And, you know, I'm watching, you know, a program that uh, at this one high school that delivered 2,400 industry certifications in one year passed by their students out of a student body of 2,060. Amazing. You talk about employability in, on steroids. There you go. So that's why you see me so enthusiastic and excited about how Choose Anchorage is ready to strongly partner with the Academy's program and how AEDC is going to be there with data and support and anything else that we can drag to the table, even if it's kicking and screaming, to help make this a success. Thanks. Let's give them a round of applause. So um, I'd like to shift gears a little bit, and we have a educators panel as well. So I'm going to kind of sneak the mic back down here. Um, so I'd like to introduce them. Um, first, first we have Kat Walker, who, um, well, I didn't say I was going to do this, but I'm going to congratulate her on being a finalist for Teacher of the Year um, for Alaska. <laughs> So, so she is, she's one of four teachers selected from around the state and um, she's been um, to Nashville as well um, and, and partnering with us on learning more and diving into this subject. Um, next to her is Devin Roberts. He's a teacher at Service High School. Um, and next year he's going to take on the role of Assistant Director for Career and Technical Education in the school district. Um, so congratulations to him. Um, so he's going to be a big part of this work as well. Um, looking forward, um, Cindy Shapu is next to him. him. Um, she is currently an assistant principal at West High School. Um, she's also been diving into this work and um, next year she will take on the role of College Career Life uh, Director. So also um, really involved in the, the foundation of this work. So congratulations to me. Um, so um, Devin, Cindy, and I, along with others um, already in current positions, are going to really be um, heading up this work on, be on behalf of the Anchorage School District, and we're excited about that. So last but not least is Stacy uh, Miller. She's a teacher here at King Tech High School. Um, she's also been to Nashville and, and working to kind of explore this and, and give us her perspective as well. So um, for our educator panel, I'm hoping that you can each talk um, a little bit about how you think this transformation from an educator's lens will really support students moving forward. So we'll start with you, Kat. Um, that's a great question. I feel like in ASD, we do a lot of things really, really well. Um, and as in our school business partnership, PLC, we were talking about it just this week, and we were talking about how we don't want to copy what these other districts and schools are doing, but we want to copy their relationship to the community. Um, so thank you, Sydney, for that. Um, we really, we have great internships and we have, um, we send to kids to conferences, we do career fairs, um, we have professionals come in and give presentations, but um, we're missing some of the equity because it's only done in some places and we don't have that long-term um, pattern, the relationships that we need. And we have two amazing CTE coordinators with Anne Adesiak Andrews and Keith Hudson, but there's only two of them and they are supporting our entire district. So um, this move makes me really excited. Devin, can you give us your perspective? Yeah, um, I was an English teacher for 18 years before I became a CTE teacher. And from that lens, I can tell you, um, as I was um, working with students, um, one of the things I think I'm really looking forward to with this work is that I think the students from what we've seen in Nashville and, and, and read about and, and, and seen in some other places is that our, our students are going to have way more opportunities um, to be engaged with their business partners and our community partners. And in English, you always want your kids to have like an authentic audience, right? So we want them, they're going to have so many great experiences having an authentic audience to uh, write to, to speak to, and to listen to, and to engage with. And uh, so as an English teacher, that's something I'm very excited about. And I also feel like uh, part of this move is going to, to involve um, uh, teaming. And I, I was able to team with my social studies counterpart. And so I'm very excited 
um, that there's going to be these interdisciplinary teams working together alongside CT teachers are going to be included in that. So very excited about that. And uh, I think the pedagogy of, of problem-based learning and project-based learning is just going to add more relevance to, to what's happening in, in our classrooms and around the district. Uh, from the CTE perspective, as a CTE teacher, um, I, Kirsten kind of, she stole my thunder. Sorry. Uh, no, it's all good. Um, I, I think that the, all of that really great work-based learning um, and, uh, and the CTE does such a great job across the district of of trying to replicate a, a workplace environment for kids so they can gain those cross-cutting skills, right? The communication, receiving, you know, constructive feedback, giving constructive feedback, the, the, the 21st century skills, communication, creativity, right? Um, I, I feel like they're, they're going to get more of that as a result of this move. And so I'm also very, I'm also very excited about that. And then the last lens, I was a coordinator for a freshman academy at service for 14 years. And the transition, um, the support, if you look at our school climate surveys for the last 10 years, you'll see that there is a drop off from eighth grade to ninth grade as our kids. And it, it kind of goes along with what you shared about your 14 year old. Like it, it gets scary in these big schools for some of our kids and they can get lost in the mix in these small personalized learning um, you know, environments uh, like the Freshman Academy is going to be a, a really great spot in order to you know, wrap, wrap our arms and our, you know, our hearts and our minds around these kids and really help them um, get, um, feel belonging. As you said, I think that's really powerful. So thank you. All right, Cindy, give us your perspective right. as a former counselor, but also as a current curriculum principal. Um, what, what, what do you think will support students through this model? I think uh, at first I'd like to say, I'm saying the exact same thing over and over again. It's, it's about the relationships and to think that we're taking it to a new level that we are creating relationships for our students out in our community that so in years to come, they will be staying here because of those connections that they make in high school. It really does matter. Um, in high schools, you'll, you'll notice those favorite teachers, uh, their classes are filled and students come back year after year um, because of those relationships that they build. One of the things that I am most excited about overall is the access piece. Um, CCL, it is built in the framework of providing equitable opportunities for all students. And we do amazing things here in, in the districts for that equity piece. But as we all know, in many cases, poverty and circumstances outside of students' control does not give equitable access and to exposure to different career pathways. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of Trevor Noah. Uh, he's, a, he's a South African comedian, and he, in my mind, says it best, and that is we tell people to follow their dreams, but you can only dream of what you can imagine. And depending on where you come from, that can be quite limited. And so I'd like to leave you with that, that when a student states, I don't know what I want to do, we have to remember that that might be a true statement for them, that they can't see beyond those circumstances in which they live. So I can, in big picture, I can only imagine that we will better address our equitable access when we have every high school here in Anchorage with high caliber career focused academies and access ramps at all academic levels and that every student will be guaranteed career exploration in the community with great partnerships that we're developing and together we'll help all students with career understanding. And also what I think is quite amazing in ASD as we move sixth grade to middle schools to enhance their academic opportunities, that strategic and intentional career exploration preparation will now begin in ASD at age 11. That's exciting. So, so Overall, CCL means to me that all students will have equitable access and ultimately be better prepared for our ASD or for our Alaska community. All right, thanks, Cindy. Stacy, let us know what you think is uh, 
going to be important or um, exciting about the, the support for students through this model? Hi, um, I'm your King Tech representative, and I'm really excited to say um, we we live this already. This is our mission, and this is what we do every day. Um, I have a 22 year career. And I've done lots of things with um, education and ASD, um, but this is my dream job. I teach entrepreneurship and enterprise here at King Tech. And what we get to do here is different than what I've been able to do anywhere else. We have the smaller learning communities. We have longer time blocks. We get to break down classroom walls and have kids experience community-based um, events and the motivation is amazing because they are out doing real life. They are extremely motivated to learn how to do that. Um, a few things that um, I want to just invite you to, to give you a vision of what, what we're doing here with our community engagement. Um, last Saturday at the Midtown Mall, my students held a marketplace where they had opened their own businesses. They have their own products and sold to the community. Today, we went through all their finances and they got to evaluate how their business, um, how their business financials went. Tomorrow, if anyone's available from 1120 to 120, they are going to mount a similar marketplace for our students here in, in the building. So um, that's a piece where we can go into the community. We can also make sure all the other students in, in the school get a chance to see what do entrepreneurs do. We also have on Friday from 3 to 4.30 at the Beartooth, our uh, audio, our film and video program has a Two Oceans Film Festival where student work is put together in a film and the community can come and watch this amazing work the students are doing and they do awards and prizes and it is so fun. So if you have a chance, do that tomorrow, I mean Friday. Our early childhood education program just put together a bunch of really high quality podcasts. They are entered into an NPR podcast competition. They are linked on Molly Hayes's website, Early Childhood Education, if you want to take a look at what that sounds like. And then our cosmetology class right now is currently accepting clients. So if you're interested in the haircut, come on over. They do all the highlights, trims. So this is, I just wanted to help provide a vision of what we're talking about. We're bringing the community into the school. We're bringing the students out into the community so that they get a sense of what they're learning is relevant. It is valuable. And the community is giving them that feedback of, um, yes, you're doing a great job. It goes so far beyond the teacher. They're not working for us. They're not working for their grades. They're really seeing the impact of what they're doing on the community and building those connections. We want them to build their network right now while they're in high school. So when they leave, they want to stay because they already know who to talk to for what they wanna do. So what, no matter what that is, direct entry or if it's military or if it's continued training, if it's higher ed, if it's uh, military, whatever, whatever path they choose, they have a strong network. And the last thing I wanted to say is when I was in Nashville, I saw all of the best things I've ever done in my career. I saw teaming, which is an amazing way to teach, smaller learning communities, um, real business partnerships, which is so exciting to be able to sit with a business partner and come up with new ideas. I saw that in action. The in-school operations where students are serving other students, we do a lot of that here in King Tech and it's really impactful. And you get to see those aha moments where students are taking the skills they've learned and they're actually doing the thing and getting the feedback. So when you start seeing those light bulbs go off, it's really exciting as a teacher. All right, thanks. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. So let's give our educators a round of applause. So um, at this point, what I'd like to do is open it up. Um, we have a QR code here. What we really want is if you're on the webinar online or if you're here in person, we'd like you to log in through our um, QR code. If you open up the camera on your phone and scan it, it should pop up a website that you can um, click on. There, there's a series of uh, questions there. It's very short, three questions long. We really wanna know what after you've heard a little bit about this uh, academy work that we're launching um what what does it mean for you as a, an internal stakeholder within the district or an external partner um 
how excited are you to what's exciting to you now that you've known um, and heard a little bit about it? Um, and then maybe what some are of the challenges are that you're still wondering about. And then our team is going to use that as we move forward in this work um, to kind of guide us. Um, we also have um, a FAQ, frequently asked questions page that we're starting to develop so that we can really communicate well um, around this as we go along um, as a resource for people. So if you could do that really quickly, that would be great. Um, and before I close, I just want to, um, can we give our panelists one more round of applause? So thank you all for being here and giving up your time today to be a part of our presentation. Um, I also want to give a shout out. Um, we have uh, some of our culinary arts students in the back that have prepared some snacks. So um, as you're leaving today, definitely eat some food. They've prepped it for us. We're really happy that they did this for us. And they're really the reason that um, is behind this initiative. So say hi on the way out and um, have a snack. Um, and then I just want to close today with um, kind of a final thought. Um, this is a, a quote. Education is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Um, and, and really what I want to kind of leave with is that there, we're at the point of really big aspirational goals that provide a lot of promise for not only our youth in our Anchorage School District, but for our greater community as a whole, so that we really have a vibrant um, place to live and learn um, in Anchorage. And so that is really the goal of this work. Um, we're as a district, we're really excited to um, engage on this journey um, and, and really thank all of our partners that are with us and that will be with us in the future um, to, to join hands with us. So really a huge thank you. We're excited, more to come internally and externally, um, but I just really wanna thank you for being here today. So thanks for coming. <laughs> All right, snack time. <laughs>